he kind of distilled for me what 20th century music was all about in this one musical. Because first of all, you know, the sharp 11th thing, the tritone, that's kind of the interval of the 20th century. And he used it in a way that was highly melodic. And he's used it in a lot of the songs of West Side Story uh, as a repeated motif that, that kind of unifies the, the entire musical voice. Yeah, but if you look in the strings and what the food, the bop bop, the bop bop, bop bop, bop bop, bop, it really comes from a mambo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, or absolutely. Yeah. And you know what cha cha is? Call it a cha cha, but it's not really a cha cha phrase. Yeah. It's more yeah. mambo. It used to be a cha cha. Yeah, well, you know, I got a great quote. I'm trying to remember the name of the, um, the Latin musician from the 1950s. And he said that basically that he invented the chancha as mambo for Americans because it was too hard for them to dance the syncopated, fast rhythms of the, uh, the mambo. So he slowed down the tempo and he made it less syncopated and he called it cha cha. Actually, called it cha cha cha. But that's detail of orchestration that just kind of um, flashes by. It's a very soft note, and it's not the, the focus of attention, but that's what makes great orchestration, is you have all those little details in there. Because even though you might not hear them very clearly unless you focus on it, you feel it. All those overtones that come from the harmonics and the uh, the hammers on the, the vibraphone, all those vibrations, especially you know if you're live in the room, you feel those. In film, game, TV, and in theatrical production, we're, we're uh, dramaturgists. You know, we, it's not just about having cool music, it's about telling the story. And if you can evoke the, the, the guy with the big hat and the beard in, in the corner of the club, with one instrument, then wow, you know, you've really helped that whole production by uh, by bringing that to them with, with just a little gesture. Mm -hmm. When I think of that uh, idea of having uh, little woodwind solos, I, yeah, I think of Ravel and I think of John Williams. They do that a lot, where it's just a bar or two of solo, and that means something. That that's that's not just a, that's not just a throwaway. It's a way of focusing in on the character moment by focusing in on a, a solo sound. There's another real problem with classical musicians, and that is that they learn, quite rightly, a sense of time which is not the same sense of time that a jazz musician or indeed a rock musician uh, or a folk musician thinks of. They, they, think of. they think about phrasing. And I'd write strings of 16th notes, and I'd say I'd had to say to the musicians, "Don't phrase it, just play it in time." And I was working with the BBC Concert Orchestra, and these, you know, these guys just very good players, but they had no idea. And I said, "Look, this guy over here, his name is Greg Roman. He's a drummer. He's a really good drummer. And what I want you to do is play to what he's playing. Don't just phrase the music the way you think it's going to feel more romantic or more. Just play." Take his time. He's the guy. And and that was difficult for them to understand. All right, we've got the suspended symbol crescendo. That is always a uh, you know guaranteed uh, successful transition. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Randy Newman calls the suspended symbol the most important instrument in the band. <laughs> Half facetiously he says that. Yeah, because you know you can get uh, from uh, from here to there with, with the suspended symbol. Easiest segue in town. The important thing was, uh, whenever you're writing anything, is to uh, as a composer is to plan. So in other words, I don't just sit down and start writing. That's the stupidest thing anybody can do. I sit down with a. First of all, I hang around with it for a while. I just you know sing sing in the car. I let it ferment for a little while. Then. I sit down and I'll write a, on a scrap of paper, I'll write, not even music paper, I'll write an outline of, I want it to start with an elephant walking into your bedroom, I want it to eventually get to a place where you've got a lot of bunnies hopping around, and I want it to end with snakes in your underwear. So, you know, at least I have an idea of what I'm going to do, so that's my outline. 
And then I say, then I think about the means whereby mm. I can get the elephant and the bunnies and the snakes. I believe that as musicians now, especially in the times that we live in, it's very, very important that we be express the, the spirit of our times. And not the spirit, the negative spirit of our times, but the positive spirit of our times. With recent political events, one might think that there's nothing positive about our times. But that's not actually true, because we hold uh, the, the potential for positivity in our own uh, personalities, in our own hearts, in our own souls, if you believe in that sort of thing. I did a, uh, a book called uh, Pat Metheny Interviews. So I worked with Pat a lot and uh, I've known him for, since 1974. And I did a book of interviews with him. One of the things that we talked about is the fact that what I mentioned earlier about people having fantastic skills but not doing much with them. And mm -hmm. they get hung up on the nuts and bolts. They get hung up on you know what kind of guitar you have and what kind of strings you're using and what's that amp setting and what's that pedal you're using and you know what reverb are you using on the Lexicon 224XL and you know what is it and that's all those are all fun questions for for and they, they're good questions they're useful questions but they're not the question and they're not the thing and I I said to him it's like having a really delicious kind of food in front of you and you're talking about the fork, <laughs> it's not the thing.